thank you so much for joining me. I'm Tracy. I'm an upcycler and I want to create a lacy summer top and a shrub to go over top of it. Now I thrifted this. It's like a slip top or cami. Very simple. You know, it has a little bit of a sheen to it, a little bit of a satiny feel, maybe teeny little lace around the arms, a little bow, but uh, for the most part, very plain. And so I want to create layers of lace on this. And then because I'm not a big fan of my upper arms these days, I want to create a shrug to go over top of it. And this is going to be a really simple project. Now, this is just a top that I thrifted. And I know you're not going to find, if you want to create this look, you're not going to find this exact top. This just is kind of a bat wing, has some lace on it already, but you can find tops that have lace on them. Just get them oversized, you know, something you might want to turn into a shrub. So I'm going to start with this and then finish with this. And this is just going to be so simple and fun. The first thing I want to do to mine, and you can have yours as long or short as you want it, I'm going to cut four inches off of the bottom. Okay, so I just cut up the side four inches, and now I'm just going to lay my four inch mark at the bottom of the top, and just keep moving it and following it over to that four inch mark. And I will just do that all the way around. Okay, so I have a pretty big stack of cutter doilies. Most of these have already been cut on. What I want to do is this will be all filled in with lace, sort of solid, but the bottom will just have some hanging lace pieces all the way around in all different lengths and colors. And so I want to start doing the bottom row first because I will sew that over top. And so the decorative lace that I put on the rest of the shirt will cover where I sewed that on. So I'm going to do the bottom first. Now, this is sort of artsy. So you're not going to have the exact same doilies as I do or the same anything. So. You have to kind of improvise, but I'll show you what I do. I'm taking, starting with this little pile of doilies. Now, I won't pin any of this on. I'll just select what I want, take the whole thing over to my sewing machine, and just start sewing it along the bottom. So, let's say I'll take a piece like this, okay? But I won't sew it on like this from end to end. I will go to like this center piece and I will sew from here to here so that I have some dangling at the ends. See, that would just be too straight and rigid. I'm going to make it more kind of floppy. <laughs> and so when I'm at my machine, I will just overlap this half an inch with white uh, straight stitch. Sew all the way over to this piece right here. And so when I sew my next piece, let's say I want to use this one. Now I won't sew from here to here. I'll just sew from like here to here. And I will butt it up against the one I just sewed and overlap it a teeny bit. So there'll be little gaps in there, but I have it low enough where that won't show the stomach or anything. And if you feel you have a really boring straight piece, you can pleat it a teeny bit. So, you know, this might be the next one I use. And I will sew it maybe from here to here and not here to here. And I'm just budding up, budding, budding them up to each other and sewing them all the way around the bottom. I am going to use white thread. And I am going to set my machine on the largest zigzag stitch that I have. I like using zigzag with lace because of all the holes and stuff in it. Um, I wound two, two bobbins. I'll use at least that because the zigzag stitch takes a lot of stitching. And you know, can I give you a helpful hint? 
I've run across these old spools of thread before. I'm going to use this because this is all I have. You wouldn't think I would have thought this through a little better and bought some more white, but um, it gets weak over time. Over the years, it deteriorates just like any other fabric would. And so, especially when hand sewing, it can be frustrating with old thread, even though you can get it for a nickel or something, you know, at some garage sales, thrift stores, things like that. But I wouldn't recommend it. But that's all I got. So I'm going ahead and doing it. <laughs> okay, so I stuck my the bottom of my top underneath the needle. And I am just, I'll probably start with a piece like this. It's on the side. And I'll probably start in a few inches, start sewing right here. So I'll just stick my needle in so things don't move around. And I'll just stick this underneath the needle, push it down, go forward and back to lock it in. Now, since this is such a big flat piece, I might pinch pleat that just a teeny bit. Okay, so the doily actually comes all the way over to here, but I'm going to stop right there. Now, I will just take a piece like this and probably sew it from just like here to here. Put my needle in. I'll lift up that presser foot just so I can butt that up against the other piece of lace. Very good. And continue sewing around until I get to about here. Then I'll stop and butt up another piece. So now I have that bottom row on. And now, you know, I'm just going back through my lace and my remnants and it's going to be like putting a little puzzle together and there's definitely no rules to this. So maybe I'll take a piece like this and maybe I want that there and I will just pin it on. Okay, you get the idea. <laughs> I'm going to leave, I'm going to stop here because the straps, I'll just do something a little different there. So I will just maybe take another one here and pin it, say, here. I don't have to overlap these because I can always put another piece in there. This is just, I said it before, it's just like putting a little puzzle together. Now, I typically will only place like, let's see, find another one, maybe a piece like this. I will only put like two or three on at a time, and then I'll go to my machine and I will sew it. Because if you have all these pins and all these remnants all over the place, it gets really confusing. So... Maybe I'll overlap this. Maybe I'll put that there. And then I will, that's about where I want them. Now I'll take my time and pin these on a little bit better and then go to my machine and sew those three on. And then I'll come back and add some more. Just real quick here, I, there's a little teeny, like quarter inch piece of lace here. I'm overlapping that a tiny bit. And also just like with this lace, I will use a zigzag stitch on this. Now that I want to get inside the top, I'm going to remove my front plate. and just slide it in from the bottom. I tell you, if you upcycle to sell, lace 
these little lace tops or any lace tops sell like hotcakes for me <laughs> back when I sold. So I'll just take my time and follow that doily all the way around and then move to the next one. And I'm just trying to stay pretty close to the edge on all of these. Now I have those three sewn on. And where I overlap this doily over top of these little ruffles we just made, I overlapped it a little bit and then I sewed it straight across right on top of where I sewed these on. But the rest I followed around the shape of the doily. Now you'll notice this starts to get heavier. And so I am just going to take my time and just fill in the gaps. I'll have to overlap quite a bit. So, you know, maybe I'll take a piece. This is a corner off a runner. And I think I'll put that like right here. Stick a pin in. Another little helpful hint when you're pinning these, you um, want to weave it in and out just like once because they have a tendency to fall out because there's not a lot for the pins to grab onto there. Okay, so I'll just keep filling in, sewing every two or three doilies that I get pinned on, and uh, I'll let you know how it's progressing. <laughs> covered except for the shoulder straps okay so this gets heavy with all these doilies and lace and it pulls this down a little bit so I am going to take these shoulders up I'm gonna pinch an inch and a quarter so that will actually be two and a half inches gone but um, I'll do that at my machine and I'll just show you. I'm going to stitch on the outside because I still need to cover this with lace and that'll hide that um, seam. And then plus on the inside, we'll have a perfect seam. So win-win. Okay, so your sewing machine should have all these markings up here. Next to the presser foot is quarter of an inch. Here's half an inch. Here's one inch. Oops, my hand's in the way. There's one inch and one inch and a quarter. And that's where I want to sew. So I know this is really, really close up. <laughs> Don't look at my nails. Okay, so there's a seam at the top of that shoulder strap. I'm just folding it over on that. I'm going to line it up. I set my machine now on straight stitch. I've been having it on zigzag. And I'm just going to go forward, back stitch. And go all the way across. Well, I got that kind of crinkled there, but you know what? As long as I do it to the other one, going to be just fine so I'll go over that again and then I'll do the other one and then I'm just going to snip that off because that'll all be covered with lace okay so now I just need to finish the lace on the straps and I want kind of a scalloped piece for that and I am going to snip this off about right, let's see, can you see that? Like right along here. Now this will hang over the outside of the strap a little bit and this will be right next to the inside, but I'll show you that. Okay, so now I have my little scalloped piece. I'm going to put the straight side 
There's still a little piece of lace there. I'll just overlap that a tiny bit. And I'll pin this on. I'll just pin it on like that. And I'll sew this one straight as I can here. And then I'll sew it straight on here. And there will be a little bit of scallop that comes outside of that shoulder strap. Okay, so now I have that all pinned on. I'm just going to my machine and zigzag stitch two rows. Now, you may not have a mannequin. You can certainly do all this pinning and stuff on your table, but what I'd recommend is slipping like a, um, I use a priority box that's all flat, and I slip something like cardboard in between the two layers to make it easier to pin so you're not always sticking your hand in there and trying to pin. So I'll get the strap lace sewn on. Okay, I'm good with that. Super cute. Now, um, maybe you want to go a little further. So a lot of doilies have, this is yellow, but you would probably want white or maybe you would want some color, definitely. Um, I would use white though, but a lot of doilies have these crochet little flowers crocheted into them and you could put some flowers on here you could take strips of bed sheet and do you know just some little ties or fringes maybe something in the center and a flower you could sew on some pearls you could put a few mother of pearl buttons just for a little extra detail and sparkle have fun with it and be creative. So let's work on the shrug. Okay, so here's the top I'm working with. And I need to cut it up the center and out. And I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so here's my top. Here's the front of it. I need to fold it in half this way to find the center. And then I will just line up all these seams so that I know where the center is and so that it's right down the middle. Okay, so mine's just so wispy and flowy that I had trouble lining up those seams. So I'm just going to freehand right up the center. You can do it the other way if you're more comfortable. I know that makes people kind of gasp that I just eyeball things, but you know, everything doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now that I have this cut open, I'm going to put the front back together like this, and I'm going to angle that lace right here a little bit. Okay, so this is the top, the collar. I want to stay in the lace and cut, and I'm going to cut about two inches from the side here, and then I'll sort of angle it and make it curved. Let's see. Okay, so see how I have it just kind of curved. Now right here where the lace meets the shirt, I am going to sew, this is a strip of a bed sheet, half an inch wide. I'll measure how long this is, but yours can be any length you want. I'm going to snip this in half, and I'm going to sew one side with a zigzag stitch right on the fabric part, not the lace, and same on this side. And I will face them, I'll do a close up and I'll show you. Okay, I cut that bed sheet strip in half and they're each 29 inches long. I still may shorten them, but I'd rather start off too long than too short. Now, I'm going to sew one to this side. I'll overlap it about half an inch. Facing, which will be the inside where I cut and just zigzag stitch over it a few times to make it durable because this will be a tie 
and it will be tugged on. So I'll just go to my machine and get that stitched on each side. Okay, so I just stitched that on the outside because we're going to finish this off with more lace. Okay, so to finish it off, I'm going to take, I think this was a corner of like a tablecloth. Maybe it was a round tablecloth. I don't think it was a curtain. Maybe it was. Anyway, I am going to just cut a pile of pieces like this. Now, this is approximately five inches from point to point. It's about one inch wide, but some will be four inches long. Some will be three quarters. Some will be an inch and, you know, I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to cut out a bunch of shapes like this because we will be going all the way around, but I'll show you that. It'll look kind of like a fringy collar. Okay. So I'm going to try to show you on here how I will sew these on. I have a pile about like this. I can cut more if I need it. I don't want to lay this on my white table because it's so hard to see this white on white. So I'm going to try to show you here. So I'm going to start sewing. I'll sew everything on the outside. I'll start at the bottom of this fabric piece. I'll probably overlap that. Um, and so I'll take a piece like this and I'm only going to sew probably about an inch, inch and a half in the middle and not these ends. And so when I start sewing, I'll put this in my machine, I'll lay this down and I'll try to stay close to the edge and sew about an inch, inch and a half. And then I'll grab another piece and I'll start in, I won't start at the very tip, Kind of like how we did the lace on the top. I'll butt that against that one and sew another inch, inch and a half. And I'll keep doing that all the way up and around and down to the bottom. Now the shrug is done. Isn't that cute? Now I haven't seen it with the top yet. I'm excited. So let's put it all together and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's the top. There's the shrug open. So cute. You can always tie it if you want. Ta-da, gorgeous. You know, I gotta talk about a question I get a lot though over the years is these cut doily pieces, so many people have asked me, wouldn't they just completely unravel in the wash? No, they do not. And I've never had one completely unravel. They will fray and shed a little bit, but um, at, if you wash it, especially if you dry it in the dryer. I wouldn't dry it in the dryer though. Um, you, you're going to have to probably cut off some weird um, fraying that's too long or sort of out of control. But I would just wash this in cold. I have a hand wash cycle on my wash machine. Line dry it or lay it over a, a um, drying rack for your laundry room. Okay, thank you so much for watching.